This video will talk about how to link external components and the top level assembly together using a central parameter file. In lots of assemblies you may have components that are built inside the assembly. They are not linked like these are. And you can easily control them with the, the parameters table which is located on the modify. I put mine on the bar for convenience. But there's a little difference when you have an external file, and that's what this video is going to be talking about. Let's start off by getting a lay of the land. This is my top level assembly, and it has two linked components. All of this is controlled by a master component called a link component. This component, as I said before, I move my parameter icon to my toolbar is being controlled by these user parameters which are all been made favorites that's a key point when you add one you make it a favorite so if I change a parameter in this table it will automatically change the assembly and all the components they affect for example the box width let's change it from 8 to 10 you'll be able to see that pretty quick I did that, I save it, I then move back to the assembly and do a update and you'll see that the box changes in width. So let's talk about how this is done. Let's make a new external component using the master table. So you start off by going to a new file and you must save it because we're going to be adding in a parametric table. So I'll save this and I call it demo parametric box. Okay, the next step is to insert a derived component. The derived component will be the master list of parameters. It's called linked master. So I'll go down to L and pick up link master. Say OK or select and it'll bring up the link master. Now I'm not interested in any of the model solids or components or bodies. I'm interested in the parameters. So down at the bottom of the derived table you'll see parameters. Expand that and you want to check the favorites. Mine was checked already, but yours probably will not be. So check that and say OK. So in comes that new file as a derived component. And you'll see if you hit the parameters button that you'll see a linked master and all the user parameters are available. Now your master list could be very extensive. So you want to be careful and not pick them all only the ones you need for your new component. In this case, I want my box width, my box length, my box wall thickness, my box height, and my box corner radius. These all already need. So I'll say OK to that. Now they are favorites within this component. I'm going to start my model. So I'll start out with a sketch. And I'm going to draw a centered rectangle. And notice it's looking forward. This is going to be my width. So I just simply hit B for box and it comes up with my parameters that were linked from the original. The only difference between these parameters and the original is the word reference. But that is because it's coming over as a reference file. So I'm going to call this the box width. It plugs it in. I'll hit tab and go to the link. Hit B again and I'll pick up link. Hit enter and I have a fully constrained box from parameters. I'll finish my sketch and then I'll extrude it. Of course, I'm going to hit B again for box and pick up the box height. The next thing, since this box has had rounded corners, I'm going to put the fillet in before I shell it. So I'll go to fill it and pick all four corners. I'll then I like this and hit B again 
or box corner radius and I'll put the fillet in all the way around. I'll then shell it. I'll pick the open top and for the wall thickness again I hit B for box wall thickness and the wall thickness comes in. You've got to admit that's pretty slick. I'll go ahead and save and now let's go back to the master linked file for the parameters and change a couple and see what happens. So here's my box width. Let's make it very radical to see. Let's make it only 2. Let's make the length to be 20. Let's make the wall thickness to be an 8. Well, let's make it a little thicker. Let's make it a half. And the box height, let's make it 10. And the corner radius cannot exceed uh, 1 inch. So I'm going to make it a half. And say OK. Now, I changed my parameters, but I must remember to save the parameter file. Otherwise, the other components that are linked to it cannot see them. So now I go back to my demo box. It knows it's up to date, not up to date. I can, by the way, update it by clicking here or in the timeline. Right click and say, get latest. It's up to you. And notice it changes to match the box that we just defined. So that's the idea for high parameters. It just so happens I'm using the same variables in my demo assembly. So this is also out of date. Notice that both components are out of date even though I only changed one. So I'm going to up, up, click on that to update it. And there we have the finished box. I put that into the assembly just like, like I did any other part. If you look, you see you have the user parameters into it. Now, I link that into it, but only using one. That's component spacing. I have a space built in between these two components through a formula coming from the link table. A question that has surely come up is, how do I add a parameter to my master and propagate it to all components that need to use it? So I'll go to my master. Here it is right here. Go into my parameter table. Hit a use a parameter. And let's call those, I'll just use a drain hole diameter. Remember, no spaces. So just use the underbar. And I'm going to set the value to 1, which is 1 inch. Say OK. Now, the next step is to make it available, you have to make it a favorite. So click on it and it goes up underneath the list. Say OK and don't forget to save. Now you go into any component you want that you want to add it. I'm going to go back to my demo box. Click on my parameters. And you'll see that there it is in the list. Whoops, I forgot to update. So I need to update. I forgot that. So now I'll go into my parameter list. And you'll see there it is, drain hole reference. Now if I needed that one in this component, I would simply make it a favorite. That's very important to make it a favorite if you want it available. The same thing is true by removing a variable. Just simply go back to the table. Find the variable you want to get rid of. Don't make it a favorite anymore. And then erase it from the list. Say OK. And save. It will be removed automatically when you go back to the other file. After you update, it's gone. It's there, but it's a model parameter. You can get rid of it. Okay, I hope this explains how you can use parameter control the complete assembly and all the linked components within it. Thank you for watching.